Hello everyone, welcome to my Prismata Advanced Exercises series. I'm going to walk through my solutions to the Prismata Advanced Exercises, that is to say those in the combat training in Tier 3 here. Uh, if you don't know what Prismata is, then I have a different Prismata playlist for you, which is my Prismata playlist. Uh, in the first game, I walk through everything extremely slowly and explain how things go, and we sort of get a bit faster from there. Uh, this is for people who have already who know how the game works and are having some trouble with the puzzles themselves and are interested in seeing uh, not just what the right solution is, but how to come up with the right solution. So without further ado, let's get started on exercise number one, counterintuitive defense tactics. So here we are. How do we solve this? What What is there that we need to worry about? First of all, who gets to attack first? It's him, right? In some of these puzzles, you get to attack first. Ah, I get to attack first, but it just goes on the Aegis. Fine. So let's actually back up for a second, now that I understand the rules, and try to analyze this puzzle. How are we going to defend? The opponent is attacking for four damage, and um, sort of the natural thing to do against four damage is you press Q, right? Ta-da! We lose the two shield modules, we get maximum absorb. But if you plan ahead into the future a little bit, this is a bit short-sighted, right? Because what's going to happen on the next few turns? Our opponent's going to be attacking for three several times. How many times? Well, we can count that out, but let's just for now say for a while. And if we don't have any granularity, uh, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be losing an entire wall and absorbing for zero every turn. And... Unsurprisingly, the puzzle is set up so that this is an insufficient solution. We reach him for one, but he has two he, he gets to kill our Tarsiers first, right? We're just a bit too slow. So wouldn't it be nice if we still had some of these shield modules left to defend with when he's attacking for three? So the idea is to um, look ahead and see, well, okay, we're giving up one absorb this turn that we could get, but in exchange, we get two more absorb, like for two whole turns, right? Uh, as we as we block on these shield modules. And then indeed, even longer as we start killing his Tarsiers and he bumps into our wall instead of into our Tarsiers. Um, so we, we, we accept a short-term loss to preserve our defensive flexibility. Uh, and since, you know, it's not exactly just flexibility, since we know he'll be attacking exactly for three, we don't need to, like, decide how many shield modules to block with every turn. It's going to manage itself just fine. But to preserve granularity is, is what Prismata players would say here. And after that, it's pretty easy to get through to his Tarsiers. So let's just... Uh, Rewind a bit. Um, so again, you, you could figure this out by by note first seeing how many turns will he be attacking for three. I mean, I guess forever, right? But also, how long will it take us to breach him? We're attacking for three. He has five, eleven health. Uh, and if we can ever get through to kill one Tarsier while we still have a wall, uh, then we'll win. Or if we can get to two Tarsiers on the same turn he reaches us or something. You know, that, that would also be possible. Uh, so you, you can plan out exactly how, how long you'll have to hold off, but here it's it's clear that since he's only attacking for four once and three many times, we'd rather save our shield modules to block against the three. And uh, what is it that it says when we, uh, when we win the game? Uh, there's a, teal, uh, a little tip, but I didn't pay attention. Multiple walls are very inefficient for defense when you have no engineers and your opponent is repeatedly attacking for three damage. So this this is something you might actually choose to do in a game. A lot of these puzzles are things you don't actually do in a game. Um, here, you know, if you have just wall ng ng and you can't get any more ngs anytime soon, um, it could sometimes be worth losing one absorb this turn if you think it'll save you multiple absorb in the future, having those NGs around. All right, moving on, let's do exercise two, rushing your opponent. 
So what's this all about? First of all, notice we're against adept bot, so not master bot and not even expert bot, but one tier lower. And also, we're sort of cheating, right? Like, this is not the standard Prismata um, opening position. We are player one, but we have seven drones instead of six. Uh, so we get to use a player two build, but we get to do it before our player two opponent, who's just the normal player two. Um, what is there in the set? Well, they're hinting, like, you should probably rush. And yeah, like, that seems pretty clear, right? This is very much a red-green kind of game. Um, with Feral Warden, Electrovore, uh, Emolite, sure. Um, there's just a ton of ways to put on pressure. And Feral Warden in particular, like, it doesn't look like a pressure unit if you're not used to playing with it, right? It's a defender, right? A prompt defender for three. Um, and... You know, it attacks for one forever, which is great, but, the, you know, so it's, it's kind of offense, kind of defense, and that's true, um, but games with Feral Warden in them accelerate very, very quickly, because you can think of Wall, for example, as a unit that absorbs two health and then produces three health when it's done, right? Eventually you'll soak with the Wall, right, and it'll just be worth three health. Only one of your Walls is worth the two regen. The uh, the others are just worth three soak. Um, Feral Warden, you can think of as a unit that absorbs two, just like a wall. Uh, but instead of producing three health, it produces one attack forever at, at the end of that. And so you can see that a game where both players buy Feral Warden will is a very fast arms race, right? Both players building up a big pile of attack while just barely staving off the other player's attack, and pretty soon you can't defend anymore and the game collapses. So it's got the same amount of kind of absorb as wall, but games with Feral Warden tend to be very much faster. Now, you know, Feral Warden is not the only unit in a set. There might be other units that discourage this kind of fast, sharp play, but that's that's the kind of kind of unit game kind of games Feral Warden leads to, and these units all contribute to a very fast game as well. So we're going to build two drones. You could try a turn one Animus. It might not be the worst thing in the world, but I don't think it's right. Um, like, you, you could try Animus and then just Electrovore Immolite. <laughs> I don't know, that might actually win. Um, but instead we're just going to do a fairly normal um, Player 2 Feral Warden opening, which is... Turn two, forget about drones, just build attackers. Or build tech buildings so that you can build more attackers. We might sneak in a drone or two later on in the game, but we're going to stay on nine, ten. I think, like, I, I haven't, you know, I haven't gone through this exercise recently, and I don't remember exactly how my opening's going to go, but I'd be surprised if I ever got above 12 drones. 12 seems a little high, but it could happen. 13 seems, like, just indiscriminate. But we'll see. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. Um, I don't think it would be wrong to build a second an uh, drone and an animus. You could like get out. Mm -hmm. It might be wrong actually, because <laughs> uh, how you you really want to fit in another conduit next turn. I guess you could build Tarsier Imolite conduit next turn. That might be all right. Um, might even be better. Eh. The opponent will probably respond to this with an Animus, and our Immolite is going to look sort of stupid against their Rhino, or perhaps Feral Warden. So... I think that I would rather have a Conduit than a Drone, just because I'm not going to build... Because I don't want to have to cut... Um build crummy attackers next turn in order to squeeze in this conduit. I want the conduit more than I want the drone long term, and in the short term the drone isn't really helping that much. Okay, so let's try this. I also build two Tarsiers, or honestly, you know, Tarsier Electrovore? My opponent has not built an Animus, which means he won't be absorbing next turn, so this Electrovore will get full value, it'll kill an Engineer, 
Or, you know, in the worst case, maybe I can defend with it, although I suspect I'll be building a Feral Warden to defend rather than depending on Electrovores. Okay, so he's building a Gauss Cannon, which I might consider absorbing on the Electrovore for, but I'd rather just do some damage and get out more attack. Rhino will absorb just as well as Electrovore does. Tarsier is fine. Electrovore could be better. But I wouldn't be surprised to lose an Engineer pretty soon. Eh, I think I'll build the... I'll build the Electrovore. There's, the, uh, uh, there's a lot of good choices right now. Uh, but I think Electrovore is good here, and... Uh, if we ever do lose an Engineer, then whatever. Our Electrovore can provide defense while we build more, uh, more attackers. The opponent continues to have no Absorb because he didn't build an Animus next turn, so this is great news. And I can just build another Rhino to soak up his one attack. And honestly, he's not even fighting back. Um, we don't want another Electrovore because we don't have any more Engineers to power them. An Immolite is probably good, probably better than a Tarsier, because the opponent is already having trouble defending. And this puts maximum pressure on next turn to let us get to those squishy little drones. I'm going to float the $2 here. Not sure exactly what I'll do with it, but it's nothing productive to do with it this turn. I could build an Engineer, but I don't want to. Look at this. This Immolite produced enough attack that the opponent couldn't actually defend while absorbing. And so we get to just keep pummeling him. Let's build another Immolite. I could even drone up here if I wanted. Do I want to? Sure, why not? Ah, I can't drone up. My Electrovores are eating all the electricity. All right, fine. Well, I could build another Engineer, but I'm not. it doesn't really matter. We, we've won the game already. Uh, I'll just uh, allow myself to build more efficient attack instead. He continues to just not quite defend, which is pretty embarrassing for him. Okay, uh, so we're, we're ending up actually, like, wasting this whole conduit. Eh, we'll just do this. Build another Electrovore. So, the Rhino, obviously, we're not going to use to defend. We're already absorbing on this Rhino. But it's a fast attacker. Actually, I mean, if I'm... Yeah, that's fine. And you can always build Electrovore plus Engineer to add on some more attack. It's a lot like a Steel Splitter, right? It costs six and a red to, power, to create a powered Electrovore. Electrovore is just much more powerful than Steel Splitter because you get two free Engineers. If you didn't, it would be, like, about the same as Steel Splitter. Anyway, so like, I, I built this conduit, but I've actually never built any units with it. Uh, sure. Which just goes to show, like, how far ahead we are by having cheated and gotten an extra drone. Uh, I don't know, build more rhinos? Uh, I, I wasted four dollars. Basically. So these rhinos actually should have been feral wardens, it occurs to me now. Uh, I don't know, the gas cannon, who cares? We'll just put on more Tarsiers and stop thinking about this mission. Because then, like, I, I only absorbed on each, each uh, rhino once or twice. And they've run out of attack. If they'd been Feral Wardens, they would have been continuing to apply more pressure, more attack. These Rhinos that are sitting here defending are, like, embarrassing, right? If they had been Feral Wardens... So when, when I built them, I was thinking that I would need to defend with them and then attack a couple times and then go back to defending. In which case, like, the Rhino is fine. It's two health... Sorry. It's like an absorb once, and then two damage, and then two soak. Which is fine. Um, Feral Warden is sometimes... is usually better than that, right? It's like two absorb, and then one damage a lot of times. But in a high... in a, in a situation where you're under a lot of pressure, you might... you might want a Rhino, just because, like, it's nice to absorb once and then defend on. 
but I think Feral Wardens would have been a lot better here, since we're, we're so far ahead. Anyway, so on, on this uh, puzzle, there's a lot of lines that, that win. But I think that, like, the key point is to build an Animus on turn two. Uh, and then build efficient attackers. Um, you can you can do it without building any green at all, as you saw. I did that. Uh, and could have even built a drone as well. Um, but it's I think it's better to have some green, because the Feral Wardens would have made things a lot... Uh, they would have gone... They would have worked even better than the Rhinos, and I was floating the green for, like, no obvious reason. Um, plus you have access to Barrier, which is nice. Um, what else is there to note about this game? Eh, I don't know. That should do it. Let's move on. Oh, hang on. Did I, uh, actually get to the end? I don't remember if we already saw this tooltip. Not the... the Buying a Feral Warden every turn can be useful, because it allows you to consistently absorb two enemy damage without buying a Blast Forge. Indeed. Uh, but I didn't buy any. I should have. <laughs> uh, they're quite strong. Let's move on to Exercise 3. Coffee Break. Coffee Break 1, I should say. Uh, so they warn us, this puzzle is very tricky. You can restart if you want, using this button. Or this button. Oh, the R isn't underlined. But it works, I think, right? Yeah, it just should be underlined. So there you go. Bug report, I guess. So what do we have to deal with here? The opponent has uh, four isochronuses, but one of them has less health for no obvious reason. Um, they're attacking for eight here, and we could try to plan out how we're going to defend every turn. But I think that this mission just sort of uh, solves itself if you do sort of reasonable things. You don't need to plan... well. You have to do the right things, but they're sort of they're sort of the same things that you you would normally do if you have practiced at Prismata, right? There certainly a new player could get this puzzle wrong. It's it involves a couple of un, of somewhat surprising plays, but it's not so surprising. Like I don't think it would help to analyze exactly you know write down how much your opponent is attacking for on each turn as like a chart and figure out how to defend. Just notice this turn he's attacking for eight. Do we have good defense against eight? Yes. Wall, wall, wall. No need to do anything weird with our attackers. We'll attack this Isochronus, of course. Now the opponent attacks. Q defends correctly. Do we have any trouble defending this turn? No, the opponent's not attacking at all because the Isochronuses are all on cooldown. So, we attack, we kill an Iso, and we damage the next. Now here's the first turn that might be surprising uh, if you're not too experienced, is the opponent is attacking for six. What should I do? Well, I can defend six, right? Do this. Also, by the way, it's important to make sure that the number your opponent is attacking for is correct by doing this attack. Uh, here, we're not killing anything, but, you know, sometimes you can kill something and reduce your opponent's attack number. And in that case, you can always go back and say... You know, did I really need this Steel Splitter? Should I have held back the Imolite? Or whatever. Um, anyway, here we're doing this. The opponent's attacking for six. We can't kill that ISO. We could lose these two walls, but watch what happens if we do. Okay, great. We're still alive. The opponent's still not attacking. Let's keep going. You know, we, we did some more damage to that ISO. And, oh no, all we have left is this Immolite, which is not going to survive against his one Isochronus, right? It'll kill us. So that line doesn't work. Uh, but, if we hold back the Immolite, then we can defend Immolite wall wall. Right, this is how we preserve our Absorb. Sort of a natural thing to do that you would do in a real game. Um, not just some weird puzzle trick. It's really valuable to get the plus two absorb every turn, and it's often worth sacrificing, you know, a relatively weak unit like Immolite in order to ensure that. And now the opponent's attacking for zero again, so we just go in there and kill him. And now he's attacking for four. Um, this is another sort of, like, tricky decision. We could do this. Attack... We can't kill his Immolite, 
So, what to do? He would breach and kill a Tarsier. That's not great. Here, we hold back the Steel Splitter as well and deal only one damage, which kind of sucks. But it's actually going to time out just right. We'll be able to get a couple turns of two damage in and kill this Isochronus before he attacks again. So we gain... Uh, if, we, if we attacked here, we would lose Wall Tarsier, right? By not attacking, we lose just Wall. So we gain a Steel Splitter in exchange for doing one less damage to him, which is great. And now we can attack for two. He still doesn't attack us. We attack for two again. We kill the Isochronus. We can't defend. Oh, no. Uh, but this is actually fine. He's going to breach us and kill a Tarsier. But the Steel Splitter is invincible, right? It heals every turn. And the opponent can't ever kill it because he only deals two damage. We could hold the Steel Splitter here and we would defend. But we don't even have to do that. We can say, go ahead, breach me. You can't even hurt anything, right? So this puzzle was sort of a lesson in how important Absorb is, right? If you look at it, both both turns that we did something a little bit weird, um, why? I can't press left and right, but I can press shift left and shift right. Interesting. Anyway, both turns that we did something a little bit weird, holding the Emolite, holding the Steel Splitter, were to allow us to get Absorb on a unit. Uh, here on the wall and the next time on the steel splitter and so it's not always the best thing to absorb for as much as you can as you saw in I think the first uh, puzzle in this series but um, generally you would like to absorb for something if you can and here it works out nicely yes let's leave what's next sinking isochronus I have not reviewed this puzzle since I solved it, so let's see what this is all about. Mega Barrier! Eight! What? This is busted unit! How are you? Not, this, this is better than Defense Grid, is it? I don't know. Defense Grid builds uh, drones, so... So this this mission is called Sinking Isochronuses, so you might consider that that's a thing you should do. Uh, also, you're not allowed to build drones, so you really you know are being... Encouraged to spend all your attack on ISOs. Um, tip. The Isochronus attacks every second turn. Synchronizing them to attack all at once is highly effective against large defenders that absorb small attacks. So the idea is... Let's say I told you that you could have... Um, four attack per turn. Sure. Sounds good. I'll take it. Um... Actually, let's make it a little more exciting, and let's call it 8 attack per turn. Um, since we happen to be against someone who has this gigantic wall. Um, you know, 8 attack per turn, that's great. We would be killing, you know, one enemy unit every turn. This this shield module. Um, but <laughs> it's not actually that great, right? It's going to take us forever to get through. What if I said instead you can have 16 attack every other turn? Would that be better or worse? It would be a lot better, because the opponent would then every turn get... He would get 7 Absorb every other turn, the turns we're attacking. But on the turns we're not attacking, he gets 0 Absorb. And we deal the same amount of damage over those two turns, right? We deal 16 total damage, whether it's every other turn or 8 per turn. And the opponent gets 14 Absorb over those two turns if we're attacking every turn, but only 7 Absorb if we attack every other turn. So you can you can really do well against um, big absorbers if you can find ways to give them turns where they don't absorb anything, as long as you don't decrease your total attack numbers by too much. So here, the obvious play is to build two isos. The opponent isn't even attacking. When we build these isos, they're going to be synced up with these isos, right? And so I assume that if we next build, if I, like I haven't tried it, let's actually do it. Let's just say, let's just say I build ISOs like this, right? Um, I think we'll lose if we do this. I bet, right? 
Certainly it's clearly bad, because when these two isos come in, what are they going to do? Nothing. They'll just bump into this gigantic wall. And if I build more isos later that sync with them, what'll those do? Nothing. They'll just bump into this gigantic wall. So we're actually better off doing nothing this turn. Uh, because next turn we'll have 26 bucks and what, seven green? We could build the rest of the isos, <laughs> right? And they would all be synced up together. No, those are gas charges. Try again? Okay. So now we have 10 ISOs all synced up together, and we're doing 20 damage every two turns, which is a great position to be in compared to doing 10 damage every turn. Right? Instead of him losing just a wall every turn, he loses like nothing one turn and a whole bunch of stuff on the other, the next turn. And now it's time to defend, right? We don't want to build any more attackers this turn, uh, and he's threatening to breach our drones, so let's just build an, an Aegis. Um, if you want, you could throw in some Gauss Charges here, probably. Like, how many more Isos do we want to build next turn? Oh wow, he has a lot of attack. Um, you might actually probably not want to build those Gauss Charges. It's nice that they hit together with the Isos, but... We're going to want to build a number of Aegises and Force Fields coming up pretty soon. So I'll just float the money to next turn. I should maybe have built an Engineer. No, nah, we're not absorbing anyway, so we don't need granularity. Hmm. I wish I could build some more ISOs this turn. What did I do wrong? I mean, I think this would still win, but I think I, I, we're, we do better actually not to float the money and add some more engineers because I don't have, I won't have enough prompt defense next turn uh, to let me also build attack. Whereas if I put in these engineers, I don't need to spend as much of my green on defending. I can just do this and add one more ISO. And why not? Let's build an engineer. We're going to get breached before too long, I suspect. But that's life. And if we really wanted to, we could do... No, we can't. So we have to lose some drones this turn. And, like, we might as well just do this. He'll breach for two, and we can still build the last two ISOs next turn. And then we'll be just sort of breach-proof and say, yeah, sure, come kill as many drones as you want. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, he's not breaching us uh, again. I'll force field to protect the rest of the drones, build another ISO. Actually, forget these stupid drones. I just want more ISOs. Let him breach for a couple drones if he wants. Who cares? And this defends, and then this wave of ISOs completely wipes them out. Cool. You'll want to synchronize your isochronuses more often when your opponent has a large absorbing defender. Right. So I would say more generally, there is value in synchronizing isochronuses only when, by doing so, you can deny your opponent absorb. If your opponent has, like, let's say, an energy matrix as his defender, uh, it's worth sinking Isochronuses unless you already have four attack every turn. Because if you do, you're not really denying your opponent any absorb by sinking the Isos. If you have four Tarsiers, let's say, then sinking the Isos doesn't really do any good. They're always getting full absorb value off your energy matrix, and so you might as well just build as much attack as you can as fast as you can. Okay, let's move on to highly defensive units. Okay, this is an actual standard Prismata starting position, unlike uh, the one where we were supposed to rush. Tip! In this scenario, the second tab contains no rushy units and is highly defensive, providing an excellent opportunity for go to go for a huge economy. Try getting a third engineer on your second turn. Wow, a third engineer. Who could have guessed? Uh, yeah, so that's that's what you want to do when you want to build a large economy and you don't want to be limited to just 
When you want a very large economy, you don't want to be limited to only two drones per turn. You want to be able to build three drones per turn. Usually four drones per turn is overkill, although there are exceptions. Um, and here, like, I could cut a drone to build another engineer and be like, yeah, I can build four drones next turn. But it's better, generally, to just build three drones. Uh, don't, don't cut drones to build engineers to let you build more drones in the future, generally, right? Again, there are exceptions. Uh, I would say more generally, don't waste energy to let you build more en uh, engineers, because then, like, what are you doing with the engineers? Using their energy, right? So you just use the energy you have now. Fine. The opponent is mirroring, also going for a third engineer. Very good. And we'll just build a bunch of drones, and now it's time to decide a little bit about what to do. We could build more engineers and keep droning, but as I said, that's usually a bit too much. Um, instead, it's probably better to build a tech building. Uh, Conduit and Blastforge both seem reasonable here, uh, because, like, Gauss Fabricator is good, but you don't generally want to, like, rush out Gauss Fabricator right away. It's it's hard to support without some defense holding it back, holding it up. Um, so I'm going to go with Blastforge first. The Infusion Grid will be a nice thing to build next turn, probably. Or perhaps a Steel Splitter, who knows. All right. So the opponent's attacking with a Gauss Cannon. I could build a wall, that defends. I could build an Infusion Grid, that doesn't defend, I'll lose an Engineer, but I'll have m the same amount of net health as if I had built a wall, right? Instead of three NGs and a wall, that's six, I'll have two NGs and an Infusion Grid, also six, but I'll be absorbing for more. So that's fine, I'll do that. And I'll just drone up some more. I could cut another drone to get a second Blast Forge here, but I don't really want to spend two blue next turn that badly. I just want more drones. Like a Drake? I don't know. How does this look? This lets me build Drake Drone Drone, which is honestly pretty cool. But I want a third Blast Forge at some point for the Infusion Grid, and then start getting some... It's not the Defense Grid. Um, and then start getting some Drakes. So, I don't know. Both of these plays seem reasonable to me. You could do either one of them. And be all, like, not egregiously misplaying the set. I think I'll go for more drones and then um, try to get this infusion gr uh, defense grid up before I do anything too aggressive. As you can see here, we lost that one engineer because we didn't build the wall, but if we built the wall, we'd be losing an engineer this turn, and instead we're not. So it comes out about the same. Uh, I think I will build a steel splitter and two blast forges and a drone. And an Engineer. Sure. The Engineer's a little bit... A little bit unclear if I want to do that. In fact, I'm even not so sure about the Steel Splitter. Maybe it should be an Infusion Grid instead, and then I can get another Drone, which is nice. This is pretty greedy. Because uh, next turn we're building, like, a Defense Grid and a Drone, probably, right? Um, and we might be exploited a little bit if the opponent can attack for, what, six? Six would be the worst number for him to attack for, for me. But I'm fine with that. If he builds up three more attackers... Actually, he can't do that, so he's only going to be attacking for five. I can lose two engineers onto grid, that's fine. Okay, and he attacks for four, which is even worse for him. There we go. And actually, instead of a drone, I could maybe build a conduit to start just saving up attack for that Gauss Fabricator. Saving up green, I mean, for the Gauss Fabricator. And we'll start building, like, drakes, I guess, pretty soon. Yeah. Drakes and steel splitters for a while is going to be the plan. And the opponent's attacking for seven, which just gets soaked up perfectly by the defense grid. So we'll build some engineers to replace this pretty soon. He'll, he'll probably attack for at least eight next turn, so I'll want this. If he attacks for nine, it'll be a tiny bit awkward. I'll have to lose the infusion grid and absorb for only six, but not a huge deal. So see how this defense grid is getting us a ton of value, right? The opponent has seven attackers, but they're only killing one engineer per turn. By building this infusion, this defense grid, 
we sort of nullified his first six attackers. Which is why, in sets with large absorbers, it's generally good to go for a high economy, because you can counteract your opponent's rushy attack units. Um, and then you'll have... you'll be on roughly equal footing with them in terms of effective attack, but you'll have many more drones to build up more attack with. Uh, we'll build more drakes to keep threatening breach pressure. I'm not going to click the Blast Forge here, although it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Maybe I should. What am I doing next turn? Um, probably want to build an engineer to get my me back to maximum granularity. Two engineers, I guess. Yeah. So next turn, I want to build a Drake. I was thinking about doing this to let me get out the Gauss Fabricator next turn, but there's no rush. Um... And if I do this, what am I going to do with all of my money next turn? I don't think with only I don't think I can manage like to have just two blue. So I'm going to not click the Drake. I want to have three blue next turn, but it's worth thinking about. As so you can see, even though we only had three attackers that turn, we killed as much defense as the opponent did, and our Drakes are forcing him to hold back this drone just in case we click everything, so that he can still get absorbed on his energy matrix. And so by not actually clicking everything, by not spending our Blast Forges, we can sort of make uh, make life tough for him. Make, make him look bad for holding the drone back. It was the right play, but we punish it by not actually clicking the drakes. We threaten to click drakes, so he has to hold drone, but we don't have to actually click drakes. Okay, fine. Although, again, maybe we should, right? Next turn I want to build a Gauss Fabricator, so that fits, like, Gauss Fabricator Drake is a pretty okay next turn, honestly, and I won't need three blue for that. I can use just two. So Drake, in addition to providing breach threat, Drake also lets you sort of avoid wasting blue by just throwing away a Blast Forge, well, not throwing it away, but trading your extraneous Blast Forge for two attack. And here, it's kind of nice, because it actually kills a drone. Um, and we have a plan that involves not spending the third blue, so we might as well just get rid of it. Uh, nine attack. What about eleven? Eh, it doesn't really help. Clicking any number of these things still leaves him perfectly defended. We could unclick a steel splitter. Uh, that, like, quote exploits him um, because he's he's um, gonna have to lose the two energy matrices anyway but like I don't get any value from clicking the steel splitter it doesn't matter like I deal one less attack than I could and he absorbs for one less than he could there's no real it doesn't really matter okay so let's get this gas fabricator and uh, I said Drake but honestly two steel splitters might be better just because they can defend and we're not gonna have four blast forges I think the fourth Drake is a little bit silly our defense this turn is a is a bit awkward we're gonna have to lose infusion grid onto defense grid and uh, only absorb for four instead of for six but uh, he might honestly have to hold back some steel splitters <laughs> Uh, if, if he can only attack for seven, I'll be quite pleased. No, he didn't. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, here we have perfect defense. Infusion grid onto defense grid is great. I'll just build more attackers and with the leftover money, drone in TNG. I don't want to replace the Blast Forge just yet. But probably next turn I will. I have too much income to spend it with just this tech. Uh, we're gonna build a wall. Steel splitter, gauss cannon, blast torch. I'm planning to build the energy matrix next turn because the defense grid will be turned off and I want a big absorber still. Uh, Let's just build uh, another Blast Forge, so let me click the Drake and still have three. This way he has to lose a Steel Splitter. Or 
Or two steel splitters? Oh yeah, I forgot. He has to lose... Indeed. Okay, so on this turn... I could build an energy matrix. But actually, the opponent can't actually deal any damage to us this turn, right? How much are we absorbing for? We're absorbing for nine, right? Because the defense grade is losing seven damage no matter what. And the wall can absorb two after that. So even if he could attack for nine, we would take no damage. So I should not get too eager to defend by building an energy matrix here. I would rather just build more attack. We're out of steel splitters. Amazing. Uh, so let's cut this steel splitter and build a drake instead. Fine. And, uh, I don't know. Conduit? Oh, actually, since we're about out of, uh... No, I can still spend three blue next turn on Energy Matrix plus the last Steel Splitter, so I won't click a Drake just yet. Um, but I will build a Conduit because we're gonna be spending our tech pretty cheaply, right? Spending four less dollars on blue than we have been previously. And we have more drones because the energy the defense grid has been building them for us. So another Conduit should help us spend our, our gold. And the opponent's frantic force fields are a strong indicator that we're winning here. Still can't breach, fine. But an energy matrix defends perfectly. Build the last steel splitter, two gauss cannons, engineer, and uh, click a drake, I guess? Eh, let's click two drakes. It makes him lose both steel splitters. So he'll only actually attack for six. Actually, six is just as good as... Uh, Eight against this? Uh, no, it's as good as seven. So what if I do this? Now he attacks for seven, which is just wall onto energy matrix, which is pretty convenient for me. Yeah, okay. He'll probably hold back the steel splitter and attack for only six because it exploits, but you know, it's fine. It's the same for me as if he had chosen to attack with it. And ta-da! We're finally breaching for a million here. Um, and we can just do whatever we want. We're out of Steel Splitters. I should have probably clicked more Drakes. I forgot that we don't have any uh, defense. I was thinking I would need to maybe build another Defender eventually, but clearly that's not the case. So I'll just burn all these Blast Forges. I don't know. Get another Energy Matrix. I don't know. He's, he's never going to be able to attack us, so forget it. Let's just uh, build... Let's just see how many Animuses we can build before the game is over. Just to prove to him how far ahead we are. Alright, I think we're going to get them all. Animus supply has been depleted. Okay, this is how you show your opponent that you're ahead. You build, you build animuses you don't need if you want to be rude and say, look how far ahead I was. Um, or also to, to hint to your opponent, maybe you should concede. I'm building an animus I don't need. Reconsider whether you have a chance of winning. It's usually correct to defend with your biggest defender last so that absorb as much enemy damage as possible. Yep. Uh, except in the case when it's a lifespan unit that's dying anyway, in which case absorbing on it is sort of pointless. Okay, that was the first, what, five? Uh, maybe I should have done this in threes. Oh well, we did five. That was the first five uh, puzzles in this set. So we are done with this episode. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll do at least some of the remaining puzzles. Whether it's all of them, who knows. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.